Good morning. Uh, my name is Wade Brown. I'm with the Penn State Center for Dirt and Gravel Roads Program. Um, so this presentation is going to be an overview of the Dirt and Gravel and Low Volume Roads Program. And at the end, we're going to talk about some of the projects, our program funds, and also how the program is kind of set up and run through the conservation districts. So this program was started because of the connection between uh, roads and their negative impacts on waterways and streams, uh, specifically uh, sediment pollution. Um, Pennsylvania has a lot of miles of roads, a lot of miles of low volume and paved, low, low volume paved and uh, dirt and gravel roads that service a whole host of industries across the state. So a lot of our road system in Pennsylvania if you, if you notice, a lot of them are very close or directly follow the stream systems. A lot of early sediments are built along streams, a lot of footpaths that go through valleys uh, follow streams because of the, the easy uh, travel paths. And a lot of those footpaths over time became our road systems. So roads and streams in Pennsylvania are very closely related. We have over 83,000 miles of streams in Pennsylvania and 123,000 miles of public roads. And this screenshot here shows a, an, a high level overview of the stream systems in Pennsylvania. If we overlay that with the road systems, you can see they follow pretty closely. So the things that occur and we do on our roadways have both positive and negative impacts on our stream and water quality in Pennsylvania. So this system and our program was built because we want to keep the stream out of the road, but also keep the road out of the stream. Roads naturally intercept drainage. So naturally, if you have a, a topography without a road system on it, the water will flow over land and it'll do what it naturally wants to do. As soon as you put a road system um, in, however, it acts just like a storm sewer system. The road is going to collect all runoff, all stormwater, and if we have inadequate drainage, inadequate road surfaces, you're gonna get highly erodible um, soils, you're gonna have the road surface eroding, and then we're gonna have a direct conduit from those drainage systems into waterways. And that's how we get a lot of sediment pollution into our streams, lakes, wetlands in Pennsylvania, um, is through that kind of connectivity between the road system and the stream systems. And sediment is by volume, the largest pollutant of the waters of Pennsylvania, as well as the United States. So roads have a big, big impact on water quality in this state. Um, you know, it, it's pretty obvious after a large storm event where you have a lot of damage and roads really exist where they shouldn't and the road and the stream fights and you get a lot of uh, volume of sediment dumping into the stream. But it can also happen on other roads where you might not even see a stream, but if it's, an aggregate or dirt road, as vehicles use it, it loosens sediment, clay, clay particles, and those silt fines get suspended in the water. Um, and then you get a rain event and all that will wash and flush right into a stream. You know, larger storm events, they can move larger rocks, uh, such as this example here from Center County, where we have uh, a lot of riprap moving down from a storm event, dumping into the stream. Um, but we also have a lot of you know, everyday drainage. You have spring seeps in streams and then you get a rain event and then you have ditches that are directly connected to streams, even headwater streams. And all those fines wash into the stream and then they can fill in the void space and have a big negative impact in water quality and aquatic organisms that live and survive in those waterways. And here you can see the ditch drainage and all the fines, and you can see the natural stream, uh, how clean the gravel is. And over time, those road ditch drainage can fill in all those voids. And insects, fish, that type of thing, have a harder time surviving and reproducing and uh, impacting streams. So when it comes to sediment pollution, anything that gets onto a roadway and washes down and into our streams or wetlands, ponds, lakes, whatever, um, it has a big negative impact on the aquatic food web. So, you know, the algae, the plants, the fish, and other, other aspects of water use can all be negatively impacted by sediment pollution coming from um, our road system. The Dirt and Gravel Mobile Roads Program was actually started by Trout Unlimited. They started it in the early to mid-90s, um, and they focused on 
exceptional value in high quality watersheds. And obviously being trout unlimited, they were concerned with trout. And the reason they were concerned with trout and the impacts of road um, sediment is because of the big money that uh, fishing brings into our, our state. You know, there, there's a lot of money brought into it. You know, $1.8 billion, probably higher than that at this point, and 23,000 jobs approximately are supported by fishing. So our road systems, when they wash and they road, and all that sediment pollution gets into our streams, it has a negative impact, not only on the aquatic organisms that live in those streams, but it also negatively impacts a billion dollar industry across our state. And Trout Unlimited was one of the first drivers of this because trout are an indicator species. So when a, a, a waterway is being impacted, trout are one of the first fish species to show impacts. So the first one that's gonna, gonna die or be negatively impacted by sediment pollution or other pollutants. And when it comes to trout specifically, they need clean gravel to reproduce. Um, so if you have a trout stream and it is uh, next to a, a gravel road that is eroding, not stable, it can fill in the void spaces where those eggs need to hide um, to be able to grow and reproduce. You know, I think we've all seen streams look, look like chocolate milk after a rainstorm. That is sediment pollution. A lot of that will come from roads, especially in the northern part of the state where we don't have a lot of agriculture or active agriculture. And the forests and watersheds, when you see a stream turn brown, a lot of time that is a direct connection between the road and uh, inadequate stream or ina inadequate road drainage. So that sediment has a lot of negative impacts. It takes away the reproduction of aquatic organisms. Um, it reduces water quality. And depending on where you are in the state, a vast amount of our state drains to the Chesapeake Bay, which if, if you follow uh, the Chesapeake Bay program, um, there's a lot of sediment impacts and pollutant impacts going into the bay that we're trying to mitigate. And our program hopefully can help accomplish some of that goal and improve water quality as far south as the Chesapeake Bay. So it, water quality, it affects the sediment, you know, it affects the insects that other fish live on or, and, and feed on. Uh, but the sediment, you know, doesn't always just come from gravel roads. It can also come from low volume roads and paved roads, such as oils, gas, uh, brake dust. One other than one that is very large is salt. You know, we salt in the winter time. Um, and a lot of times there is a direct connection between roads that are paved and streams and rivers and waterways. And we dump a lot of salt on our roadways and that as it melts, which does, it's doing its job at that point, but then it melts and it's transported into the water system. And anytime you have uh, salt, other sediment, it limits oxygen. Um, it really has a negative impact on aquatic, aquatic organisms, has a negative impact on water quality. And it's something that our program is trying to address um, through funding road projects. So as far as the program itself, <clears throat> the dirt and gravel road program was started in the early 1990s by Trout Unlimited. Um, a group of guys were in the northern part of the state, forwards and watershed, it started to rain. And the trout stream they were fishing turned basically to chocolate milk, it turned brown from sediment pollution. Um, you know, you're in a forest watershed, it's not what you would expect. So they couldn't fish, so they wanted to figure out where this set of pollution was coming from. And they were able to find direct connection between runoff from dirt and gravel roads and the set of pollution in the streams. Um, so Trout Unlimited being, you know, the, the environmentalists they are, they actually formed a task force, they examined the problem and they quantified the scope of the problem and were able to get support um, from the state legislator to start providing money uh, to fund projects to address these, these pollution sites. So Trout Unlimited identified over 900 sites on public unpaved roads just in protected watersheds. So EV, HQ streams, this is what they took to legislators and said, look, there's a problem. We need money to fix this. And they got it. In 97, they, uh, they had the dirt and gravel program established. And it was a $5 million program at that point, 4 million municipal roads, which is administered through the conservation districts and DCNR got 1 million. The law was basically one page and 
the meat of it was to fund safe, efficient, and environmentally sound practices and procedures which prevent dust and sediment pollution. So that's the goal of the Dirt and Gravel and Low Volume Roads program. So it was a two page law, very short, um, very effective. In 2000, the state conservation districts performed another inventory of all watersheds. We went from 900 pollution sites to over 12,000 identified pollution sites or what we call work sites. Um, basically a work site would be where we focus program funding, anywhere that a stream and a road um, are close enough to have an impact. So if you have a road draining to a stream and it's, it's causing sediment pollution, that would be a work site. So if you're looking at a, a road program, such as ours, we are gonna focus our money where the road has a direct impact to a stream, wetland, or other surface water. So in this example here, you can see um, the work site starts where we start having erosion and direct flow to the stream. So we're not gonna be able to pave or do work on all gravel roads or low volume roads. It's only where there's gonna be direct connection to the stream and sediment pollution is gonna be highest. That's where we're gonna focus our money and our time and our efforts on. 2003, uh, the 1,000th project was completed through the program. And in 2009, so six years later, the 2,000th project across the state uh, was put on the ground. And then in 2013, the program went from a $5 million program to a $35 million program. Uh, the state legislators saw support for the program. Um, township officials and municipalities were asked for more money for these type of projects, and the legislators came through. They gave uh, $1 million originally for DCNR went to $7 million, and $4 million for conservation districts and municipalities went to $28 million. And then they threw us a curveball. They said of that $28 million, at least $8 million must go to pave the low volume roads with an average daily traffic count of 500 vehicles a day or less which was great because it now opens us up to doing projects on paved roads that are also impacting streams. In 2015 was when that first funding increase hit the ground. It was when our first projects on paved low volume roads occurred. And in 2016, we completed our 3,000th project. <clears throat> So that's kind of how the program started. It was Child Unlimited saw a problem. They identified the scope of the problem, where it was coming from, and then they lobbied legislators to get us money. Um, so we went from originally a $5 million, and now we're a $35 million program. So when it comes to the program itself, um, it's an environmentally sensitive maintenance program. We're going to focus on the environment first. Uh, but by doing that, we also need to focus on the roads. So we can make better roads are gonna make a better environment. And if we can combine those goals, we can make better roads for municipalities, lower their maintenance costs, and then we can accomplish the program's goals, which is a lower long-term maintenance cost. And hopefully we can also reduce the amount of maintenance that municipalities have to do on their roads. Because as a road manager, their goals, they want better roads. They want roads that or draining properly or stable or drivable um, that are not eroding. Our goal through the program, we want a better environment through proper practices and procedures. And it's actually more than 15, it's over 20 years now has proven that by implementing the program's goals and meeting program's goals, um, you can make a better road system and you can improve maintenance techniques are gonna benefit both the road and the environment. Proven it time and time again. So the way the program is set up um, on the municipality side, it is set up through the PA State Conservation Commission with um, assistance and in conjunction with the PA conservation districts across the state. Um, the state conservation district is the one who gets that $28 million annual allocation. They give that money to the conservation district based on specific formulas of the miles of gravel roads and work sites they have, as well as the amount of miles of low volume roads and their proximity to, to waterways. Um, so each district gets their own amount of money and they also have their own uh, local policies as well. To be eligible for that money, if you wanna apply, uh, applicants must attend 
a two-day environmentally sensitive maintenance course. It's one day this year because of the, uh, the COVID, but you must go through a training course and that training is good for five years. Uh, myself at the center and other staff are available for technical assistance along with the conservation districts. And this program, the one thing I really like about this program is it emphasizes local control. It's set up where the money is given to the conservation districts who then work with their local municipalities to focus on roads that are having big impacts on streams. And it allows the districts, as long as they're focusing on road and water quality, they can kind of set some of their own policies to address issues that are occurring in their county that might not be occurring or might not be an issue in another county across the state. So there's local control. I mean, that, that's a good thing because Pennsylvania is a varied state. It's uh, topography is different, geography is different, geology is different, um, soils are different. So local control allows this to be a very successful program across the state. And there's also three levels of the program. At the state is the Conservation Commission who gives the money to the districts. So at the county level, we have the conservation districts. They're the ones that receive the money. They're the ones who help develop uh, work plans. They're the ones who take the grant applications and rank them through their quality assurance board and decide which ones get funded and which ones do not get funded. They also provide project oversight uh, to make sure the projects are being installed as they were contracted and also to make sure the projects are addressing water quality issues and make sure they're being constructed as, uh, as they're supposed to be. And at the local level as the grant recipients, this would be municipalities, whoever is submitting an application for a project. Uh, they're the ones that really make this program work. They're the ones that um, need the money the most to be help with their road budgets. And they're the ones that are gonna do the project construction either themselves or by um, contracting it out. So it's really three levels. You have the state, the county, and the local. And at the state level, um, you only have two guys that run the whole program. So it's, it's a very low overhead cost of a, of a program for the state. So that was a quick uh, program history, program overview. Um, basically, if you want to do a project, if you're interested in doing projects through the program, um, we always ask you to go directly to the conservation district. It's their program the State Conservation District and myself and other staff at the Center for Dirt and Gravel Roads out of Penn State, we will assist them. Our job is to help them be successful in implementing the program. Um, so if you're interested in doing projects or have more questions, you wanna make sure you contact the Conservation District um, and work with them on getting projects on the ground. So with that said, um, we wanted to show you some of the projects uh, that the program has done and, and has actually put on the ground. Now, this is just a snapshot of projects, um, but we can fund a lot of different things now. You know, we're not just doing road projects, you know, on gravel roads. We're now doing uh, paved low volume road projects in downtown Lancaster, in Pittsburgh. Um, I've done a couple right outside of Philadelphia and Delaware County now. So we're doing a lot more projects. We're doing bigger projects because we've got more money. Um, but that doesn't change the underlying goal and theme of the program. And that's that the projects that can, that can be funded, we gotta make sure that those roads are impacting a water body and that we are gonna be improving water quality through the project. Um, the other thing is we wanna make sure we're not funding routine maintenance. Routine maintenance is not fundable, such as storm sewer cleaning or just grading a road is not gonna be uh, funded. If it's part of a larger project, it could be fundable, but routine maintenance itself as a standalone project is not fundable. It's got to be improving the road and it's got to be improving um, water quality. So with that said, um, again, the law says safe, efficient, and environmentally sound maintenance um, of low volume roads as well as dirt and gravel roads. But when it comes to low volume, we have to make sure we're doing traffic counts. Um, so that's important if you're doing a project on a low volume road that's paved or uh, sealed, concrete, chip seal, whatever, we have to do a traffic count before we can spend money on that. And the legislators said a 500 vehicles, they were less limit on that. Um, dirt and gravel roads don't need traffic count, but we still got to make sure we're doing environmentally sensitive maintenance and making sure we're impacting water quality. So when it comes to the different projects we've done, we've done a lot. Um, this is one in Fulton County. 
uh, about 70, 65,000 spent in program funds. And this was a low volume road that was converted back to DSA. If you're not familiar with DSA, it's driving service aggregate. It's a specialty aggregate mix. Um, we can pay to convert roads from paved to, to gravel. And a lot of people wonder why we do that. Well, if you have a paved road that is cracking, the surface is no good, or it was just tar and chip on top of an existing gravel road where the base is very poor and it's causing a lot of erosion issues, um, sometimes it's cheaper to take it back to a gravel road um, and maintain it that way. We can actually have less sediment, sediment impacts in some instances. We also did some uh, under drain and cross pipes. We do a lot of just projects where it is just putting in multiple cross pipes on a road. Uh, this is Cold Springs Road in Cumberland County. And this is one of those projects where we did basically just drainage work. Two, 2.4 miles long. Um, it's a township road that runs through the Michaud State Forest. And it had a lot of cross pipes in it, but a lot of the pipes were not working because of the road being so severely eroded and entrenched. Um, this was a road that if you didn't have four-wheel drive, you were not going to get through it. Um, so we did a lot of work here. I laid this project out with the township. You know, the township did a lot of work themselves. They did a phenomenal job. Um, so you can see the amount of pipes we put in this. 2.4 miles long, and we put 43 cross pipes in, along with countless turnouts, under drain systems. We added uh, approximately 12 inches to 18 inches of road base to elevate it higher than the surrounding terrain to be able to get sheet flow off. Um, and then driving service aggregate was placed over the entire length of this road now. Um, so it looks like a brand new road. And this road used to drain or does drain directly to headwater uh, springs and uh, tributary. Um, so this, this really, really improved that road. Um, it really reduces sediment impacts uh, to that headwater stream and to those cold water springs. Sometimes, though, we don't just do drainage work. Sometimes we have to fix roads where they fail. And this was a road in Washington County, uh, Field and Stream Road, $94,000 of money spent through the program. And this was one where we actually had a slide. As you can see here on the top picture, uh, the road bank was sloughing and falling away. So the road itself doesn't look bad, but when you have a stream undercutting a road, you get a lot of material falling into that stream as basically one big flush of sediment. So this pipe was washing out, it was undermining. So basically they did a, a, a slide re rehabilitation here. They undercut it, filled it back up, and we put new drainage in. So there's really not a lot of road work here other than putting in some drainage, but this was bank work. Um, to address a road and a stream issue. One thing I like about this program, you know, we focus on fixing the problem. You know, there, there's off right away work here and we're allowed to do off right away work through our program if we have um, written permission from the landowner. So we can really go off site outside the right away and fix problems where they're occurring and do what's needed to, to protect the road and protect the streams and the water quality. We're starting to do a lot of these projects. A lot of stream crossings are going in around the state. Um, our program focuses on stream crossings that are undersized, which have a lot of environmental issues themselves. Uh, but we go big with our crossings. So if you wanna do a stream crossing project through the program, we're gonna measure the bank full connection or the bank full width of that stream. And that's the size pipe you're gonna put in. It's not based on hydraulic calculations alone. Um, we have to work with engineers to check it, make sure they're big enough. 99% of the time they are big enough and overly big, but we want the stream to go through the road and act like a stream. We don't want to be causing constrictions at the road and stream interface. It just leads to a whole host of erosion and issues um, and maintenance at those undersized crossings. So this example in Armstrong County was a, an existing five foot pipe in a 12 foot wide stream. So we pulled that five foot pipe out and we went with a 12 foot um, bottomless arch metal pipe. So we went over twice as big as the existing structure. You know, this allows the water to flow through better. We get big storm events. It's not gonna overtop the road. It allows gravel to move through. We also get aquatic organism passage through that road system as well. Uh, there's a lot of benefits to doing stream crossings through our program, even though they are more expensive. Um, but the program is paying for it. 
and you get a structure that you're not have to maintain um, nearly as often. Sometimes it's just simple drainage and base improvements. You know, you can see the before here, how muddy, there's no aggregate on that road, there's no base, you know, water that flows on that road is gonna flow down and get into the stream at the bottom of the hill. So we just added road base. We built that road back up, we got a crown, and we put in multiple dry, uh, cross pipes. And the more cross pipes, the more drainage features you put in, the easier it is to maintain that road. It shortens the ditch length, so you don't get as much erosion in the ditches. You get less erosion at the outfall of the pipes because you're not carrying as much water at each cross pipe. Um, and not only that, if you get a big storm and a pipe plugs, you also have additional drainage features to keep that water from destroying the road and washing sediment and aggregate into the stream at the bottom of the hill. Um, you know, simple drainage projects are highly effective. Um, you know, you can see here we only spent about fifty-three thousand dollars total for this project. You know, and it really reduces sediment impacts on the stream. <clears throat> Another slope failure. Um, you know, this one here, there wasn't a lot of um, visual indicators other than some cracking on the paving. Um, but if you went down and looked under the roadway where that stream was undercutting the road here, um, the bank was pretty much all gone. So we were able to uh, reinforce that. They basically ripped out the road. Um, put in new stable sub base with drainage, and then the township repaved the road on their own. Um, and we were able to kind of move that road a little bit over as well by shifting the road over there about one lane width to the right. It buys its room and gets a, the road away from the stream. This is another interesting project. This is a road that is in a floodplain. There's nothing you can do here in this situation to keep this from flooding. This is Somerset County. Um, it's a flat, low-lying area. You can see the amount of pipes that are through the road there. There are probably about 20. And then we built the road up after the stream crossing. So this is an area you know it's going to flood. The stream is going to flood this area. It's a floodplain. It's what it's going to do. It's what nature does. Um, but before it would flood the road, fill in the road and then it would carry as water would recede all the water would start flowing down the road because it acted like a drainage channel and dump it back into the stream and wash out the road so here um, the bottom left you can see all the cross pipes to allow as water is coming up it allows that water just to bleed through the road and continue on through the floodplain and then we use what's called a french mattress which is just ash toe number one or could be r3 or r4 riprap which is just clean stone placed over top of those, so it allows additional water to flow back and forth um, through the road system. So we know it's gonna flood. So sometimes uh, you know, there's nothing you can do about that other than just let it flood, give that water the chance to get through the road, and then you armor the road to make sure it doesn't wash and, and blow out. But by raising it up, as that water comes down, and the flood recedes, the water can still flow through the road system rather than being on the road and flowing back into the stream. Um, so sometimes you just got to work with a natural system rather than fight it. Potter County, this is Cobb Hill Road, um, another one where we just had a lot of basically erosion issues associated with lack of drainage. All it needed was more cross pipes and some base and road base improvements. Uh, by putting in multiple cross pipes, you break up the length of flow, which reduces erosion in the farmer's fields. Uh, can be a hard sell sometimes to get drainage pipes into a farm field. Uh, but if we put enough pipes in, we can mitigate the negative impacts that uh, drainage pipes typically have at the outfall. So this one here, you can see the bottom, bottom right. And, uh, you know, by raising that road up a little bit with base improvement, multiple cross pipes, uh, you now have a stable road system where they don't have to grade it as much, have to go out there and clean the, the cross pipes after they get plugged because there wasn't enough of them. And the farmer doesn't have erosion in his field. And they also did an outlet swale through the field there that you see on the bottom left. Um, we can do work off right away, as I mentioned before. Um, you know, if there's a reason to do it, um, we can fund that. But there's got to be a good reason to be doing off right away work. And in this situation, uh, you know, there was a good reason because the water was running there and we wanted to stabilize the outfall. Um, you know, one, it helps the farmer out, but it stabilizes his field. And at the end of that existing divergence, well, was a, a stream. 
So by leaving it the way it was, it really wasn't going to solve the sediment impacts. So we did more pipes, stabilized that swale, uh, and, and fixed it up. So this is another uh, off right away project in York County. This is a pretty interesting one, um, East Motor Street outside of Jacobus. So you can see it's a paved road. Uh, doesn't look terrible, but you can see how poorly uh, the road shape is. It's alligator cracking. The problem here is it takes a lot of water, um, flows upslope from multiple roads and comes down this road. So all the water would flow down the road and basically dump right into the stream. So the thought here was, if Leonard would allow us, we were gonna put in a big drainage and, and diversion swale to capture all that water and then give it a stable out location. So the road was repaved, there was some uh, grading work redone and then a big basin, an infiltration swale was installed with landowner permission. So now you can see here on the bottom right, um, how the water comes down and has a check dam at the end. So most storm events, it just infiltrates. Larger storm events, it has to fill up, which allows sediment and pollutants to drop out into that vegetated swale. And then it'll overtop and go on down to the stream. Um, so there's a lot of different projects we do in this program. You can do drainage, crop, drainage and cross pipes, under drain. We can do stream crossings. We can do bank stabilization. We can do uh, structural BMPs, such as infiltration swales, uh, pervious paving. There's a lot of different things we can do in the program and pay for as long as we're addressing a road and a water quality issue. Another one I wanted to kind of go through in a little bit more detail was this project that was completed in 2016 by York County. Um, we're doing more of these types of projects. I'd like to see other ones done. But this one here, we spent about $63,000, 22 in kind. This one here is actually a road relocation. So here you have the existing road. This section of the road's entrenched. You have a stream crossing that's undersized and it's failing. You have a large pond and you have two springs that flow, uh, provide a lot of flow to this pond and start the headwater stream. Um, so there was a lot of erosion issues here. And you can actually see when they zoomed in on aerial, here's a sediment wedge, here's sediment from the road, and here's the stream. So here's standing on the stream crossing and looking up, up slope at the entrenched road section, you can see the amount of gravel that's starting. And now you can see it after a storm event. There's a lot of gravel that washes down here into that farmer's field and into the stream and it's a maintenance headache for the municipality. Um, you know, you buy aggregate for people to drive on it, not to uh, fill in a field or fill in a stream. Um, so the township actually went to the landowner and to the landowner about the issues that were occurring there. We're trying to figure out how to best address this issue. Talking to the landowner, talking with the district and municipality, a plan was um, kind of uh, came up with, why don't we just move the road? You know, this road here goes through the field. You have a stream crossing and a trench section of road that's unstable. It receives a lot of flow. There's nothing they, they were really successful, successfully able to do there to stop erosion. The way the topography lays, we couldn't fill this road in or get drainage pipes in because it's in a valley. So the thought was, why don't we just relocate the road? The landowner said, I'll give you the right of way. If you give me this, this is my driveway, and then we'll tear this section of the old road out and just turn it back into grass. So that's what they did. They, they very successful project. And here's what it looked like under construction. So this is the new road. So you completely avoid an unstable section of road. You have the underside stream crossing that was failing not working, we can get rid of that. And we also avoid all of this spring seep and the stream and the channel here. So now they, the township now has a road that has no stream near it, no stream crossing to deal with, no maintenance associated with it, and it's pretty level. Um, so here's under construction with the new road where the old road used to be. And here is after it was constructed. So you can see that section of the road is flat, they were elevated, all of these, Markers here are for cross pipes. They put a lot of cross pipes in here. They put a nice big vegetated swale in to catch the upslope water. Um, they did a really, really nice job here. I and mean, then we were able to retire that old section of road. So the old section of road was here. We ripped up the old aggregate, 
put topsoil down, vegetate it, and put in some um, gray breaks and water bars across it. Um, so that's what it went from. It went from an eroding road ditch to a nice vegetated area, and the road was just relocated away from the stream. Not easy to do. Um, this township was lucky because they had a uh, very cooperative landowner, uh, but still, you know, around less than ninety thousand dollars through that entire project, and that included the survey and the construction of the new roadway, um, and it, it solved a big sediment impact site, and it also reduced that township's maintenance, um, you know, probably tenfold in that road. They don't have to go back in after every storm event, re gravel, pull gravel out of the field. Um, you know, this was a win-win in my, my opinion. This was a very good project. Something else we do in the program that I wanted to go through uh, a little more detail is road fill. Uh, a lot of times people think we're nuts for doing this, but at the end of the day, we get a lot of bang for our buck. Um, this is Armstrong County Gibson School Road. Again, 56 spent through the program, 56 in kind. This was a road that was severely entrenched. So this is a road here, this is feet deep, <clears throat> feet deep. So how do you get drainage pipes in there? How do you get water out once it gets into a road that's five or six feet deep? You really can't. Um, so this is down here, as it's coming down here, you can see it's starting to erode the sway on erode the ditch, and then it drains directly into a stream. Nearly 10,000 tons of road fill was put on this road just a short section. We filled it up completely where we could get drainage pipes in. Uh, so here you can see this is that intersection. Here's that same intersection, same tree, same tree. <clears throat> so you can see <coughs> as they started to fill this in, they had to do some vegetation management, which we could pay for. And we just started filling with shale, which is cheap in this part of the state. And then we capped it with limestone. Um, by filling it up, now you get sheet flow off half the road, and we can also get cross pipes in. Um, so it worked really, really well. So filling a road takes a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of compaction. Um, you got to find the fill, but it works very, very well. You don't have to fill a road five or six feet. Sometimes you only have to fill a road maybe a foot, two feet, uh, to be able to get drainage pipes in or to be able to get uh, sheet flow off of one side. And if you can re-elevate a road back up to where it used to be, you can get outlets in where you couldn't originally, and you can break up that flow. You can really, really reduce maintenance costs, maintenance time, and reduce a lot of sediment impacts to our streams. So here's a, another before and after, and you can really see the drastic difference in how much that road was filled. Um, you know, feet deep here, we were able to get pipes in and head walls, and now you get sheet flow off of the right side of the road, and cross pipes now can outlet um, without having big deep tail ditches or having to dig um, way outside the right of way to outlet those cross pipes. You know, filling the, the road profile, filling in a road that's entrenched, not cheap, but it's a long term fix. Another one um, that I was involved with was in Cumberland County Beatham Hollow Road. This was a really good stream crossing project, not cheap. About two hundred thousand dollars total, um, but this was a uh, this is a headwater brook, native brook trout stream, an existing four foot uh, culvert concrete pipe and eleven foot bankful channel. This road would always overtop in big storm events. It's flashy, so you get a rain event, it responds very quick. It would overtop the road, overtop the storm sewer. Um, just had a lot of maintenance during big storm events. So this one they went with a twelve foot wide bottomless concrete box culvert. The township did all the work themselves and going bottomless, they were able to uh, basically just pump around this. They got out the old one. The township set the footings themselves and uh, had it ready to go. And they had the uh, manufacturer come with the paint and they set the, the concrete structure in place. It was set, I believe, in four foot sections and head wall and end walls were set. Um, this is a dead end road. Um, so they had to be cognizant and aware of keeping this road closed and like the time. So this road was only closed for about two days total for this project. Um, using the concrete, they were able to do half the road, make sure it was open for emergencies if they needed it, and then do the other half. And then this township actually rebuilt, reconnected the stream channel through the structure because it was eroded on the downhill side. So they actually put stream bed material back in 
um, and then reconnected that stream grade so the stream wasn't flat going through the structure. And that's what it looks like when it was completed. Um, you had a four foot pipe, big scour hole, a lot of erosion, unstable road banks, and now we have a 12 foot wide structure. It's about five or six feet tall here. The stream flows through here and it acts just like a stream. Um, there's been countless storm events and just was put in in 2017. Not once has it come close to overtopping the road. Um, it looks really, really good, a very successful project. Again, not cheap, um, but you, know, you get a, a structure that's gonna last for over 100 years. You have a structure that you really have no maintenance at all associated with it anymore, where the township is always out there after every storm event to clean out the four foot pipe. Um, you know, Penn Township did a fantastic job here and they are very, very happy with this project. You know, stream crossings when put in right can really save a lot of money and save a lot of time over the long haul because they just reduce maintenance and they allow that stream to function like a stream and it doesn't impact the road and the road doesn't impact the stream. Uh, so there's the before and after. So they did some repaving, some drainage work associated with it. Um, you know, the improvements to this road were just phenomenal. Um, another one. So double cross pipes have a lot of problems with it. Uh, actually, no, this one, this is the one I want. Crawford Road and, uh, or Crawford County Schellenberger Road. So this is a project that really didn't have any road improvements, but it was a project where the stream was undercutting the road. The road is up here and the stream makes a bend here. And anywhere a stream makes a bend or a stream bank or a road bank, it's gonna undercut over time, it's just sloughs. You can see the amount of material that's sloughing off this bank and it all falls into the stream. So the road itself doesn't necessarily have a bad impact on the stream. It's the stream is undercutting the road bank, causing that to fail, which is also going to cause that road to fail at some point. So we can do off railway project, we can do stream project if that's what's needed in our program. Um, so here's just another view of it. You can see all the trees are leaning, starting to fail, starting to fall. So the solution here was basically tow slope reinforcement. The township had a uh, design made with wood cribbing. So they excavated up be uh, below the stream bed elevation, put cribbing in, and then planted above that with uh, live branches and other matting placed here. <clears throat> and then after that, they started restabilizing, kind of graded the stream bank back. So now as this stream flows it wants to undercut, but it can't because now this bank is protected and it flows away from the road. So the road itself wasn't having a negative impact on the stream. It was more the stream having a negative impact on the road and undercutting the stream bank and you had a lot of sediment falling into the, the stream. Um, so we can do projects that as long as there's a road um, aspect to it and we're protecting that road and protecting the stream and improving water quality, it could be an eligible project. So there's what it looks like from the standing on the road. You can see how hard of a turn that stream took before it undercut the, uh, the road bank. So again, our projects, our program, we can fund all sorts of stuff. If, if we're addressing a problem, we can go off right away with landowner permission. Um, you know, we can do drainage work, base work, stream crossings, in-stream work if that's what's needed, bank stabilization, um, structural BMPs. We've done all kinds of work in Lancaster City, um, Pittsburgh, um, a lot of borough work. So, you know, if you're an MS4 community, you can piggyback on our program as well. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things we can do here. Uh, so I thank you for watching. If you have any questions, have any more work, um, like any more input or would like any more information, contact the Conservation District. You can also contact uh, us at the center. Our website uh, is online. If you just search for a Center for Dirt and Gravel Roads, uh, we'll be the first one to pop up. Um, but again, the goal of the program is water quality and road improvement. Um, and please help the conservation districts uh, put this money on the ground and continue to do great work. Um, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, contact your district or contact us. Thank you very much.